testing. Test one. There we go. A little bit of feedback. Okay. Take your Bibles. Take your Bibles. Lift up your Bible. Stand to your feet. Smile. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. A lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. You may be seated. Our theme today, a new heart from God. And this is, this is how it goes in the bulletin I gave you. The page with the heart at the top, that's one. Turn it over, that's page two. After we complete page two, you have permission to open it up. And the inside will be the remainder of our service this morning. I want you to realize that... Every one of us, basically from birth, had a lot of the characteristics that comprised what would be properly called our temperament. The old self? You, that's the old self. So at birth, we were predominantly in an old self category and predominantly either sanguine, choleric, melancholy, or phlegmatic. I'll give you an example. Some of you are hearing these terms sanguine, choleric, melancholy, phlegmatic for the first time. Every one of you is on this necktie. <laughs> there is something on this necktie that you are predominantly identifying with. For example, as a sanguine, I think of the lighthouse. Sanguines, like this lighthouse, want to stand tall. They kind of want to be colorful. They kind of want to shine. They want their light to shine and beam out. They want to be seen. They, before their heart is sanctified, they want to be the center of attention, <laughs> the life of the party. A sanguine is very outgoing, so a sanguine is the lighthouse. The choleric comes along and he puts this big wheel on the lighthouse because the choleric is a big deal and the big wheel and his temperament says, who do you think you are? There's a new sheriff in town. Re remember um, Gomer Pyle? Yeah. <laughs> who was the big will? Who was the, new, who was the big mouth control freak? Sergeant whatever. Sergeant Carter. Sergeant Carter. Sergeant Carter. 100% choleric. Gomer Pyle was probably sanguine. <laughs> impulsive, uh, always talking, always something to say. So the cleric comes along, puts his big wheel on the lighthouse and says, who in the world painted you these colors? That's going to change. And he recruits some painters and, and he demands to repaint the thing. Who in the world put that light at the top? I don't like that light. We're going to change that. And let's check around here to see if you were built in the right. Clerics make good contractors, good sergeants, good commanding officers. Clerics, if they're not sanctified, they can, they can do a lot of damage in an organization. Because, especially, especially preachers, huh? well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a cleric could be a Tom, Dick, or Harry. It don't matter. But... Uh, but I'll tell you what, a cleric is a, a hard hill to climb, 
and a tomcat that you can't tame. Only God can tame a choleric. It's my way or the highway, male or female. And uh, <laughs> if you're if you're any of the other three temperaments, and you're a male, and your wife is a choleric, your marriage lead, needs a lot of prayer. <laughs> Now, the third person, the melancholy. The melancholy is probably right here in this little bitty hut. The melancholy is right here in this little bitty hut. The melancholy is kind of an introvert. And he's in the hut, or she's in the hut, studying the history of the lighthouse. <laughs> they know everything there is to know about the history of the lighthouse and the history of the, the surrounding area, the melancholy is perfectly content in his or her little bitty hut, just analyzing and researching and going through all the records and gaining all of this wisdom and all of this knowledge and, and thinking about how everything could have been different, could have been done better, but Melancholy introvert is not going to force himself or herself on anybody. So they just stay in the hut and keep all of this wealth of information to themselves. There's one more. Phlegmatic. The phlegmatic is probably like the birds. Flying above, observing. Not really confrontational. Kind of an introvert. But flying overhead, observing and uh, thinking, that sanguine is a big show-off. Shining and, and probably making some of my fish that I want to dive down and catch not come up, you know. And the, the phlegmatic is uh, prone to blame cast and evaluate other temperaments and, and not feel too comfortable with other temperaments. The phlegmatic is just content to fly overhead and kind of observe and before Mr. or Mrs. Phlegmatic are sanctified, they have this critical spirit. They observe and they think, where did the guy that put the big will on, on the Sanguine's Lighthouse come from? Anyway, who does he think he is? I'd sure like to teach him a thing or two, but he probably won't because he's not confrontational. Okay? Now, look at the scripture in your bulletin. Starting under the heart, a new heart from God. Did you know heart, the word heart, appears in the Bible over 1,000 times? The heart is extremely significant. And the, the heart of an unsanctified temperament will exhibit the, the old self characteristics in his or her predominant temperament. But the heart that is being transformed into Christ's likeness, into holiness, that heart will evolve and be transformed into the new heart column of his or her temperament. Let's look at scriptures. First of all, understand hearts transmit actions, attitudes, Cravings, emotions, lust, pride, thoughts, selfish ambitions, feelings, fears, intentions, doubts, rage, kind words, harsh words, slander, hatred, greed, worry, despair, sorrow, repentance, rejoicing, generosity, humility. Mercy, peace, love, joy, fruits of the Spirit, hope, and peace again. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Wow. How's your heart? Are you still living with the old heart or a new heart? A heart that is devoted to glorify the Lord. Have you received a fresh, new, spirit-filled heart from God? This 
is holiness. So many people equate holiness with, I must be sanctified, I must be holy because I quit smoking. I must be sanctified, I must be holy because I quit cussing. I must be sanctified, I must be holy because I quit lusting. I must be sanctified, I must be holy because I quit watching inappropriate movies. You know, all about do's and don'ts and used to and don't anymore. All the list of pharisaical rules. But there's more to the holy life than all of the things you quit doing. Do you have a new spirit-filled heart devoted to God? When we're sanctified holy, a transformation begins. For by grace are we saved through faith, and not of yourselves, lest anyone should boast. You're not saved and sanctified because of what you quit doing. You're saved and sanctified because he took away your heart of flesh and gave you a new heart filled with the Holy Spirit, always seeking to glorify God. That's holiness. Read the scripture with me. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take away your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. I will put my spirit within you and guide you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. It's all about the heart. No wonder Jesus confronted the scribes and Pharisees who tried to make it all about legalistic rules and do's and don'ts. What about the heart? Is your heart filled with his spirit? And devoted to glorify the Lord. Read the next scripture. Discern the difference. Jesus said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human precepts. Is God truly in your heart or vainly in your conversation? Do you have a head knowledge of God or do you really have a heart, wholehearted relationship? Amen. Amen. This is transforming. Read the next scripture. It starts with Jesus said, read it. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with your entire body. Wow. I like that translation. I tripped some of you up. <laughs> let's read it again you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with your entire mind <laughs> David said read this one with me create in me a clean heart O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me question is this relevant in your heart I hope it is. Read the next one. Do not let kindness and truth escape you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge. Seek to glorify Him and he shall direct your paths. Amen. Question, your paths? Your paths. Do they lead to self-gratification or sanctification? Your paths. Do they lead to self-gratification or his glorification? We need to review our paths regularly. How about today? Before I lay me down to sleep and pray the Lord my soul to keep, what about my paths? Did my paths show that I was pursuing self-gratification 
or his glorification? Amen. Did my paths show that I was pursuing self-gratitude or sanctification? Amen. Read the next set of scriptures out loud. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonest gain. Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. Establish your word as that which produces reverence for you. Wow. We embody the prevailing dominant temperaments that are in our hearts. And that will either be the old self or the new self. The carnal affections or the Christ-like spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to transform our old self into the new self. Amen. Read the next. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. God's word is eternal, inerrant, and it has all the wisdom we need for every situation in life. Does Christ reign supreme in your heart and life? Are you growing daily in Christ-likeness and holiness? Do you plant God's word in your heart and portray it in your life? Oh, I like that one. Do you plant God's word in your heart and portray it in your life? Read the next one. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in your everlasting way. Read on. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Read, read those two words again. Being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And again, the next one, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Praise the Lord. Inside. Thank you for helping me preach so far. You guys sound good. We've got like a choir of readers here today. Read the top left. And then we're going to sing. Put off. Put off your former way of life, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Praise the Lord. It's a matter of the heart. Now, after we sing a little bit, we're going to get into this, and you're going to get acquainted with yourself. <laughs> now, on this, this represents hours and hours. In fact, the last time I was here was the last Sunday of January, and I have worked on this sometime every day since then, and I couldn't wait for today, and it seemed like it's been a long time since I've been here. Love you guys. I couldn't wait to come back. Thank you. And uh, this helps me understand holiness. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I want to tell you before we get into it. I want you to honestly see under the red column. 
you might call that rust, under the rust-colored column. I want you to honestly see there will be, I venture to say there will be, even for us preachers, a few words that we still have to say, yeah, that's still there a little bit. That's still there a little bit. Yep, every now and then, that part of my temperament, the old self, it's still there. It still shows up. But I also want you to see that if you know Jesus, and it's only by the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, you can't do all of this by yourself. This proves holiness. This proves I need the Holy Spirit. This proves I need that new heart that the Holy Spirit gives us. You will see that in your temperament, you are bearing the evidence more and more of the new self in the blue column, in the true blue column. These songs go right along with what we're saying. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge me yet, there's an unfinished part. I'll be perfect just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hand. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, he's still working on me. In the mirror of his word, reflections that I see make me wonder why he never gave up on me. But he loves me as I am, hears me when I pray. Remember, he's the potter, I'm the clay. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. One more time. He's still working on me me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Something beautiful. Something beautiful. confusion he understood all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife but he made something beautiful out of my life he made Something beautiful, something good. Oh, all my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him, it was brokenness and strife. But he made something, something beautiful out of my life. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure.
sing it again. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. we feel your presence here already yes. we need you we say change our hearts oh God make the ever pure pure change our heart oh God and make us be like you oh you are the potter we are the clay mold us and make us after your way change our hearts oh God may we be like you Heavenly Father as we continue our theme today Help us to see that it is only by the infilling of the Holy Spirit that the old self is being transformed into the new self. Give us minds to receive the wisdom of the word and ears to hear and hearts to be receptive. In Jesus' name we pray. May every need be met today. Amen. You may be seated. Boy, it's good to see you guys. Good group today. The sanguine. I said I kind of relate to the sanguine. Um, Simon Peter was a sanguine. Simon was impulsive. Simon was mouthy. <laughs> Simon always had something to say. Simon was a sanguine. Remember when they went on the Mount of Transfiguration and Jesus was speaking with Moses and Elijah and, and Simon should have been reverent. He should have been in a reverential awe. <laughs> but he thought of something. Let's build three tabernacles here and put some names on them and uh, everybody will know that we were here. It was Simon that when Jesus come walking on the water, 12 disciples in the boat, which one said, hey, let me walk on the water? It was Simon. And Jesus said, Come on. Dare you. <laughs> I wish Jesus would have said that. I dare you. But Simon jumps out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. What's one of the temperaments of the sanguine? Easily distracted. Was he distracted? Yes. yes, he was. And what happened? He began to sink. What happened when he began to sink? Lord, save me. <laughs> Sanguines tend to be resilient. We're impulsive, but when we begin to sink, 
we know who to call on. Amen? Amen. Yep. And later on, Jesus said, who do people say I am? Simon. Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus said, right on. I'm going to change your name from Simon to Peter. On this rock, I'll build my church. Wasn't very long, and Jesus said, you'll deny me three times. Simon said, not me. No, nope, no. Nope. Those guys, they might do that. Not me. No way. What'd he do? He denied Jesus three times. But when he realized his guilt, his shame, what'd he do? He repented. He repented. Lord, save me. And after he got filled with the Holy Spirit and the old self was being transformed into the new self rapidly, what did he do? He turned the world upside down. He went out preaching and testifying and winning souls. Woo! Amen. Yeah. Some of you can probably identify with the sanguine temperament. Yeah. Well, let's look. I would love to ask for a show of hands. We had fun experimenting with this out in the foyer earlier. And I said, okay, Paula, every time I read one of these... <laughs> One of these temperament characteristics, if you can relate to it, raise your hand. And then I turned to Bob and I said, now, Bob, whether she raises her hand or not, if you know that she relates to it, you just point at her. <laughs> what I want you to do, not right now, maybe this afternoon, come up with a way to identify each evaluation. Go down your list and uh, maybe put your first initial or use highlighters. You use all one color and he can use. But go down and identify every temperament that really seems like it's been part of your life. Before you were saved and during your life walking with Christ. And then give it to Kenny and let him check all the ones that he thinks definitely identify with you. Then you do the same for him. Uh, Rick, same thing. When you get home, I gave you an extra copy. So, so you evaluate yourself and then let Pat evaluate you on the same sheet and see how much you agree and how much she would like to enlighten you. <laughs> and then, then you let her take her sheet and identify all of the temperament traits that have been a part of her life and maybe aren't anymore, hopefully all under the old self, and the ones that are becoming more and more identifiable with your temperaments today. So, the old self. I had to check every one of these. In all honesty, looking back on my childhood, loud. I'm still loud, <laughs> but for the glory of God. Egotistic, yeah. I wanted to be the center of attention. I wanted to be everybody's friend. That was me. Emotional. Very emotional. Man, something about music and playing drums and instruments and uh, just being with people. Emotional. Exaggerates. Yeah, I did that too. Prone to exaggerate things. Just tell a story and exaggerate. Easily distracted. <laughs> Man, I've always had a short, Rick said, I can identify with that. <laughs> short, short attention span, easily distracted, yep, yep. Expressive. <laughs> Can't talk without my hands. Very expressive, demonstrative, um, undisciplined. <laughs> um, nobody else can relate to this, I'm sure, but when I had a term paper, it's not due for five days. So the night before it was due, <laughs> some of you can relate to that. So the night before it was due, man, I'm trying to get that five-page term paper done. Restless. Restless. Impulsive. <laughs> Very impulsive. I've bought so many traded cars so many times. One time my wife made me sign a contract. 
if you trade cars again, you're going to keep this one for three years. Sign. You're, you're sanguine. I actually had three cars in 24 hours. <laughs> oh, he, he's a, he's he a sanguine. Uh, yeah. Three in 24 hours. He might be a sanguine. Um, fearful and worried. Prone to fear, prone to worry, prone to lust. Man, when I was a kid, you know, I struggled with that. Prone to lust. Lord, sanctify that tendency. Procrastinates. Yeah, we talked about that. Puts things off. Procrastinates. Sanguines. I'll tell you this. Sanguines hate confrontation. We will procrastinate and put off a confrontational situation because we love people. We love everybody. We want to be everybody's friend and confrontation is no fun. That's why it's hard for us to understand a choleric because a choleric thrives on confrontation. <laughs> choleric, the old self. Oh my, Saul was a choleric. I persecuted the church. When I had people stoned to death, I took credit for it. I persecuted everybody that was a believer in Christ. I hauled them out of their churches and hauled them out of their homes and had them stoned to death. That's a cleric. Saul was old self cleric. You know what it took to change him? Bright light totally knocked off of his horse, hit his head, hit the ground, saw the light, heard the voice of God, and realized he had met his match. You know, most clerics don't realize they've met their match until God knocks everything out from under them. And they got no place to look but up. Clerics are, have this bulldozer abrasive attitude. They're, they're cruel and overbearing. I'm talking about the old self, but I'll tell you what. You get a cleric that is sanctified and you've got a, a wonderful churchman, okay? But let's look at the old self, which proves we need the Holy Spirit because you can't get there to the new self, the new heart, without the Holy Spirit. The old self, bulldozer, abrasive, cruel, overbearing, hot-tempered, domineering, argumentative, revengeful, self-sufficient, impatient, angry, sarcastic, shrewd, inconsiderate, prideful, and never apologizes to anybody. <laughs> Boy, they, they made old Sergeant Carter on Gomer Pyle fit that role perfectly, didn't they? Let's go on to the melancholy. Moses, probably a little melancholy. Lord, don't send me. Don't ask me to, to do that. I'm an introvert. Lord, use somebody else. Send somebody else. Don't ask me. And then he, then he kind of made an excuse. I'm, I'm, I'm slow of speech. I'm not, I'm not a good spokesperson. <laughs> but when the new self started to be, become evident in Moses' life, when the, being transformed into the likeness of God, what happened? He was a spokesperson that confronted the king. Thus saith the Lord. Wow. The old self of the melancholy is pessimistic, the negative. Revengeful, distrustful, scornful, rigid, self-centered, theoretical, moody, gloomy, impractical, fussy, picky, maybe even OCD, obsessive compulsive. A meddler, inquisitive, impatient with other temperaments, timid, and unsociable. Have you ever known a melancholy? They are wonderful when the Holy Spirit 
gives them the new heart. These are wonderful people. Melancholies, Moses, wonderful, wonderful friends, wonderful people, wonderful assets to a church. They just make good Christians when the Holy Spirit begins to transform them into the new self. And the phlegmatic, oh, wow. You, you got to enjoy phlegmatics. They're the ones with the dry sense of humor. You know, Abram was probably phlegmatic. God says, Abraham, Abram, you're going to have a son. Abraham got a little tickled. But God, hey, I'm 100 years old. <laughs> Hello, I am 100 and my wife is 90. I think we're well past that age, okay? God says, you're going to have a son. He goes and tells Sarah, guess what, babe? We're going to have a son. And she laughs. Phlegmatics have that ability to say something, and everybody in the house is cracking up, and they can keep a straight face. I don't relate to that at all. How many of you have met somebody that has that wonderful ability to make everybody laugh while they keep a straight face? Those, those are really cool people. That's phlegmatics. Well, the old self in a phlegmatic temperament is stubborn, selfish, stingy, fearful, indecisive, insulting. <laughs> That's... That's a top character of a phlegmatic. They can insult you, and uh, you will realize how bad it hurt as time goes on. <laughs> they are good spectators, but they're thinking of what to say if the opportunity permits itself, while they seem to be just spectators. They find fault. That's why I said the, uh, the phlegmatics are the birds on my necktie. They just fly up there and overlook everything and find fault with everything they can find fault with because they might use it to their advantage and they might say something about it which will make people laugh at other people's expense. That's the discomforting thing about an unsanctified, unholy phlegmatic. You never know when they're going to use you to make everybody else laugh at your expense. But a sanctified phlegmatic is a delightful friend that can keep you laughing and lift your spirits. They are self-protective. They find fault easily, they're indifferent, and they easily offend others. They love to tease, they love to belittle other people, and they even appear unmotivated because they are predominantly an introvert. But those are the old selves under each temperament. As we looked at that, perhaps every one of us found several temperament types under the old self that we would honestly have to say, I've been there, I've done that, bought the t-shirt, but thank God I don't have to wear it anymore. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. The new self. We become the embodiment of the new self when we seek the Lord to fill us with his Holy Spirit and sanctify us wholly. I can tell you this new self does not come by human endeavor. You can't get there without the Holy Spirit. But that's why it says, put off your former way of life, your old self, right. which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. That's, that's one of Satan's understandings. Don't ever underestimate how well Satan knows you. And he knows your old self temperaments and he will get you defeated by using your old self temperaments 
to show you how infallible you're not. And then he'll try to discourage you. See? Ha! You're not so hot, Mr. Christian, Mr. Preacher, Miss Saint. You're not so perfect. Did you realize how much you exaggerated that story? Did you realize how bad you hurt that person? Did you realize how fussy and picky you were at the board meeting? Did, did you realize how distrustful you are of other people? Do you realize how offensive you were to brother so-and-so? Satan will pick at you through your old self every time he can get it to surface. You know, Hebrews 12, cast off every sin, every weight, every snare, every sin that easily entangles us so that we can run the race to win. The new self. The sanguine, that offensive, in-your-face old self becomes enthusiastic. I like being enthused, and I think people like being around people that are enthused. They want a Jesus that we can rejoice about. They don't want to see pity party Christians. They want to see Christians that have something to shout about, to rejoice about. So the new self takes on this enthusiastic, shining, lighthouse attitude. The, the new self in the sanguine is an encourager, compassionate, cheerful, jolly, eager, zealous, Still talkative, but Jesus is now the theme of the talk. Outgoing, optimistic, purpose-driven, warm and friendly, personable, and victorious. If you're a sanguine, predominantly focus on the great transformation from the old self to the new self. If you're a cleric, focus on the great transformation that is only achievable through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get beyond the old self. Be ambitious for things that glorify the Lord. Be ambitious for things that are in the best interest of the whole church, not your own agenda. Be decisive so that you can be a great leader but don't be a bulldozer that plows over everybody that gets in your way. Be resolute. Yes, Jesus was resolute. He made up his mind, I'm going to fulfill the Father's will. Yes, be resolute, but be optimistic. Be an achiever for the glory of God. Be practical. Be determined. Be a productive leader. Adventurous, a motivator, iron-willed, and delegate. But Saul becomes Paul because of the great transformation. Mm, good. Yeah, good. Saul became Paul because of the Holy Spirit. And boy, if you know his life, it really is portrayed in this character, yeah. old self versus new self. Man, he was <laughs> a dynamite choleric. Melancholy. If you know Moses, you can see some of the great transformation that took place here. The new self, self-sacrificing. <laughs> I'm seeing Moses, aren't you? I don't, you somebody else, Lord. To self-sacrificing. We're going to follow God. Follow me as I follow him. We come to the Red Sea and everybody's complaining and he holds up his rod. Lord, show us your glory. Red Sea parts, they walk along across on dry ground. Lord, the enemy's coming after us. Show us your glory. The sea closes in and all their chariots and horses and soldiers and they're drowned. 
Moses. Loyal. Loyal. Times were bad during the 40-year wandering. He was the object of everyone's criticism. They gossiped about him. They complained. But he was loyal. He got the Ten Commandments. He was loyal. He led the people. He divided and said, if you want to be on God's side, stand here. If you want to go back and serve the idols, stand over here. Whoop! Gone. Swallowed up. He obeyed. He was in touch with God now. He was a faithful friend. He was idealistic. He was sensitive. He loved those people. He loved God. He studied. He was a reader, not only of the law, he was a reader of people, emotions, and wills, and attitudes. He was an investigator. He was a great investigator. Research. He was gifted. He was talented. He was a perfectionist. Who else could have such a perfectionist nature to receive the plan of God's temple and then have it constructed perfectly, absolutely perfectly? Moses, he was perfectionist. He was analytical. He was methodical. He kept detailed records. He was organized. He was meticulous. He was missional for the glory of God. Wow. There's a lot of Moses in a lot of churches, and they're priceless because the new self is so mightily used of God. And the transformation from the old self to the new self is a perfect, undeniable presence of the Holy Spirit. Phlegmatic, <clears throat> Abram becomes Abraham. And as the new self, it is a faith. He was a man of faith, and it was attributed unto him as righteousness. He was practical. He was generous. He was efficient. He was conservative. It, it's a good thing to be conservative. It'll help you when you get old if you were conservative when you were young. Amen. <laughs> he was witty and humorous. I love people that make me laugh. I like to laugh. Laughter doeth the heart good, Amen. like a Madison. He was humorous. He had great leadership skills. He just wasn't an extrovert. He had great leadership skills. He just didn't force himself on people. He was dependable. Yes, he was. Sanctified phlegmatics are dependable. They're faithful. They are calm and caring. They can not only sympathize. Phlegmatics, sanctified phlegmatics can empathize with people. Melancholies are a lot like that too. They, they can really empathize with the needs of others. Melancholies and phlegmatics make great prayer warriors. Okay? Okay? Melancholies and phlegmatics make great prayer warriors. When you talk to somebody that says, I have prayed for you, I've fasted for you, or I'm praying for this need in the church, and I'm fasting for this need in the church, chances are it's a melancholy or a phlegmatic because they can really focus in on that prayer and fasting and need. Sanguines, oh Lord, oh yeah, be with, be with so-and-so. What was that sound? <laughs> They're distracted like that. You know, oh Lord, um, I'm supposed to pray for brother so-and-so. Oh yeah, and by the way, I got to do this today. They are so distracted. It's hard to stay prayerful. Cholerics, they're constantly generating the new achievement, the next goal. But melancholies and phlegmatics, I think they make great prayer warriors. Great prayer warriors. So 
they're dependable, they're calm, they're caring, they're faithful, they're faithful friends. They have great diplomatic skills. They're known for their organized neatness, and they're really good under pressure. Sometimes in a, in a business meeting or a board meeting, if it's getting a little tense and the, the sanguine's talking a little bit too much and the choleric is trying to dominate a little bit too much and the melancholy is trying to assess the situation, it might be the phlegmatic or sometimes the melancholy that becomes diplomatic and a good intercessor and a good mediator but not without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, everything I've shared with you today reminds us of the last verse. Do not be conformed to this old world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, or we could say by receiving the new heart, the new self that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, the old self is not acceptable in the perfect will of God. But the new heart, the heart that is devoted to serving him, is greatly acceptable in the will of God. Bow your heads and quietly... Ask the Holy Spirit to transform you, a specific old self temperament. Maybe you saw it this morning. Maybe you saw something this morning. Okay, that's, that's part of the old self that's not been totally transformed yet. And just say, Lord... I was reminded this morning of the old self. And I feel conviction because I know that's not perfectly bringing glory and honor to your name yet. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy way. Change my heart. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. All of me. Use all of me. Remove the old heart of stone. Remove the old heart that exhibited so many weaknesses and, and sinful tendencies of my nature and my temperament and give me a new heart, a heart that is devoted to doing your will. Thank you for the temperament that you gave me. Whether I am predominantly sanguine, choleric, melancholy, or phlegmatic, you made me who I am. You gave me this temperament. Yes. You gave me my personality, my character, my temperament. And I was born in sin with all of the weaknesses and not so sanctified traits of, of my temperament. But Lord Jesus, I want to be sanctified I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want that new heart that Pastor Ed talked about this morning. I want a heart that is devoted to doing your will. I want a heart that is fashioned by the Master's loving hands. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you can send your Holy Spirit to change me and make me new ready to do your will. Thank you. I know, Lord Jesus, that from time to time, the old self is going to show up. Yes, 
But may I be like Peter. Save me. Forgive me for being distracted. Forgive me for worrying. Forgive me for what I said. Forgive me for being a control freak. Forgive me for that attitude. Whatever it is, repent and cry up to God, Lord, save me. Help me get victory over that old self part of my temperament. And make me more like you. More like the new self. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If the Holy Spirit has spoke to your heart today, say amen. Amen. amen.